go through the run of show. Um, kicking off today, we'll be hearing from Mayor Jenny Durkin, followed by Director of the Office of Emergency Management, Curry Mayor, followed by Director of Seattle Department of Transportation, Sam Zimbabwe, um, followed by Michelle Allison, uh, King County Metro Deputy GM, followed by Peter Rogoff, Sound Transit CEO, um, Dave McCormick, Assistant Regional Administrator for Maintenance in WashDOT, and then um, we will hear from Director Helen Howell, uh, hum uh, Human Services Department. After that, we will do a Q&A. Um, I have a, received a only a few RSVPs for Q&A, media Q&A today. So if you would like to ask a question, please drop a note in the chat um, before the end of the run of show and I will read you in. We also have directors Andres Mantilla, Jesus Aguirre, Calvin Goings, Deborah Smith, Mami Hara, and Chiefs Scoggins and Chief Diaz uh, who are here for Q&A, uh, available for Q&A as well. Um, and with that, I will hand it over to Mayor Jenny Durkin. Thank you, Anthony, and thank you everyone for joining us at this virtual emergency operations center briefing. Um, as you know from the introductions, uh, events like this cross across, go, cut across all of our city departments, and that's why we have so many people here if you need to have questions answered. Uh, we saw yesterday and over the night that we did get some flurries of snow, but not much accumulation. We are expecting much larger snow amounts this evening into tomorrow with as many as seven inches in the Seattle area. Higher elevations may get more, lower elevations may get less, but that's the best estimate at this point. We also know that the temperatures will remain below freezing for some period of time, so this snow could stick around for a while. Coupled with that snow is also a wind chill factor that will make it colder outside than the actual temperature. We've been working with all of our departments to make sure that we're ready for this event um, it will be a significant event for Seattle. City Light and the Seattle Department of Transportation have been working to not just get the roads ready, but to be necessary if there's any powder hour, power outages or impacts to our roads. SDOT has updated its snow routes, and you'll hear Sam Zimbabwe talking about that, particularly those involving West Seattle because of the outage of the Upper West Seattle Bridge. We also wanna make sure that our vaccine clinics and COVID testing sites can remain open. We'll be doing our best efforts to do that, but getting to those sites requires some people to get out of their neighborhoods. And if you're driving, please know that we will not be plowing the roads in every neighborhood and every road. We will be focusing on our most important routes and those are the routes in order to keep transit moving. The human services and parks departments have opened emergency shelters at four locations to bring more people inside um, during this storm event. The Seattle Fire Department's Health One has been out um, operating 24 seven and will be doing so through Sunday to try to bring in people inside or get them assistance if they need it. Seattle Public Utilities has reported that a small number of residential customers in four neighborhoods, Rainier Beach, Seward Park, Green Lake and Wallingford had delays in their services due to drivers for the trucks not being able to get in because of the snow. If your household was impacted, please leave your cans outside until Saturday night. Uh, and if we can collect them, we will. And if we can't bring them back in and then put them back out at the curb at the regular time next week. We've learned a lot about our responses since our historic 2019 snowstorm. And there's several ways that residents can help with our crisis response. If you can stay home, please do. I know over the last year, we've all been staying home mostly, but it's really important to stay off the roads and not drive unless it's an absolute emergency. Please make sure that the roads are safe for our buses, but most importantly for our first responders if there are emergencies. Sign up for Alert Seattle. It's the best way to know up-to-date information about road closures, the weather, and anything related to city services. And also, please, I said it yesterday and, and we said it at our last event, check in on your neighbors, particularly if they're elderly or disabled, make sure they're doing okay in this event. You're responsible for shoveling the sidewalk in front of your house and your home. Um, help your neighbor do theirs as well. Please make sure to keep our city as safe as possible. And remember, we're still in the midst of COVID, so, no gatherings inside with, with people to, to have your cocoa and, and enjoy the snow that way. 
really keep your your same emergency pod, your your quarantine intact, wear your mask, wash your hands, keep your physical distance. We've done so well, Seattle, and events like this are gonna challenge us again, but I'm, I'm confident that we can make it through, um, but we're gonna get a lot of snow. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Director Mayer, head of our emergency operations department. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Durkin. Um, as the mayor mentioned, we are expecting a very big storm over the weekend and the very cold temperatures. Uh, know that your emergency operations center is working with the National Weather Service on a continuous basis. So we will always have the most up-to-date information on the snow and we'll be um, updating you as necessary. We're very thankful for our partnership with them. The Emergency Operations Center will be activating virtually tomorrow, starting at 8.30 in the morning. And the Emergency Operations Center is a central location point for city departments and our partner agencies throughout the region um, to respond to the storm. Our focus will be to ensure a holistic and equitable and coordinated response to managing the impacts from the snowstorm. The EOC will stay open for as long as needed. And as additional storms approach, we will continue to assess whether or not we need to stay open. So enjoy the snow this weekend um, by staying home. Um, go outside and throw some snowballs, but um, stay with your pod. If you must go out, drive slowly and carefully and make sure that you have emergency supplies in your car. So food, water, warm clothes, boots, a blanket, a flashlight, and a phone charger. And if you have pets, it's probably a good idea to keep them inside if you can. So thank you very much. Thank you, Director Mayer. We'll now be turning it over to Director Sam Zimbabwe. Thank you, uh, Anthony. Um, SDOT began pre-treating roads overnight on Wednesday. We've been continually working the snow response for 48 straight hours. We'll continue to monitor and pre-treat along our snow routes, our critical safety routes, and access to COVID testing and vaccine sites. Right now, all of our arterial snow routes are clear, and we've repeatedly gone out, checked conditions, and uh, made sure that we have pre-treatment out. We've also deployed crews to clear and, and pre-treat uh, bike lanes, overpasses, stairwells, and curb ramps that are not near uh, private property. Uh, as I said the other day, um, we can't be everywhere at once, and there may be icy conditions out there. We had some icy conditions this morning. Uh, please continue to use caution, take it slow, watch out for others, and don't travel if you don't have to. As the snow starts to fall, we'll start to clear it as quickly as we can. Uh, the fewer people that are out and about, the easier our jobs will continue to be. Uh, so uh, take care as, as you travel if, if you need to. Uh, be mindful of plows and, and uh, crews out with large equipment um, and stay safe, everybody. Hey, Sam, what do you have to say about those signs that say road closed because of snow? Is that just a friendly su suggestion? That is, more than a, that is more than a friendly suggestion. Uh, if, a road, if we have road closed signs out, please don't, uh, don't go down those streets. It's there for a reason. And what about sledding in the street? We have plenty of great parks uh, with hills that are great for sledding. Please don't use our streets for sledding. Thank you, Director Zimbabwe, and uh, thank you, Mayor, for those clarifying questions. We will now turn it over to Michelle Allison. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation to be here today. Metro is working in close partnership with our partners here on this call, including SDOT, to make sure we're tracking and monitoring the conditions and we are uh, hoping to experience a bit of a quiet commute this evening, but we know that in any weather event, conditions can change rapidly. So we will be taking care to uh, make sure that we are adjusting our service in accordance to the weather and its changes, which often means that we will need to chain up our buses, maybe deviate from a route path or adjust our schedule. So we really ask folks who need to use transit to check metrowinter.com to make sure that your scheduled trip, your stop and the conditions uh, sort of meet your needs for transportation. 
We also, like others who have mentioned on this call, would ask that folks who don't need to take a trip to stay home, both to ensure that there's capacity and to keep other folks who do need to make a transit trip that it's available to them. Remember to dress warmly, allow for extra time in your plans for your trip, and uh, please do remember we are still traveling in COVID times and would ask that everyone wear a mask while on our transit system that's a required part of your transit experience. So please thank you for uh, being sort of aware and appreciative of our operators as they're working in both a snow event and in COVID conditions. So appreciate everyone for just taking a little extra caution and do please check metrowinter.com to plan accordingly. Stay safe and stay warm. Thank you, uh, Michelle. And our next speaker will be Peter Rogoff. Uh, well, thank you, Andrew. And you're all going to hear a theme here, and that is uh, please don't travel if you don't have to, but we're here for you if you do. And importantly, the best advice I think we can give all travelers is to consult these websites and rider alerts so they know what services are available and which are not. You heard the mayor talk about Alert Seattle. You heard uh, uh, Michelle Allison talk about MetroWinter.com. I really want to direct Sound Transit users to SoundTransit.org because you, are, if you are not already receiving our rider alerts, they go right to your phone. They are provided in real time and give you the best picture of what our operations are. Uh, light rail and, for that matter, Sounder commuter rail beginning on Monday may be your best way to get around since we are not uh, utilizing the roadways. Um, and we do run trains all night in the case of light rail to make sure that the tracks are clear and the, the, the power uh, traction uh, options uh, from the overhead wires are clear. Uh, we performed very well two years ago as we have in other snow events. Uh, what we do ask our light rail riders, especially if they are using stations that are exposed to the elements, is to recognize that we are running less frequently than we do uh, uh, because of COVID. So light rail will be every 12 minutes during peak hours, every 15 minutes for the rest of the day and on weekends. And except uh, there will, at the very early hours before 6 a.m. or after 10.30, we will run every half hour. That means you could be on an exposed platform waiting for a train for a while. So please bundle up, stay warm. We are going to do our best to clear the platforms of snow. But uh, with a snow event of this size, that may take us some time, but the trains will run. So we just need to ask you to be particularly careful. Sounder commuter rail does not run on weekends, but we do expect it to be on schedule on Monday morning here again, less frequently than pre-COVID. So please go to soundtransit.org, check the timetable, get the rider alerts, and you'll know what services are available. Our buses uh, will perform just in the same manner as King County Metro's and for that matter, Pierce Transit and Community Transit, where the roads are clear, we will run. The, the regular time increments may be spotty as we deal with road conditions, but please know that we will be turning out the, ma the maximum amount of service that conditions will allow on the roadways. Lastly, just echoing everyone else, please wear your mask. There is nothing about snow that changes uh, the dangers that COVID presents. So we're asking people to socially distance, wear their mask and stay safe. Thanks very much. Thank you, Peter. Next, we will go to Dave McCormick. Hello. Um, uh, round one, uh, the first light little snowstorm is uh, through and thanks to our crews uh, for uh, going out and working continuously and thank you for uh, the people who have uh, called in and, and said thank you to our crews in their work. Uh, much like yesterday, we're going to be out uh, tonight in full force. Uh, like we typically will do during a snowstorm in Seattle, our express lanes will be open uh, continuously over the weekend. Uh, we'll switch late this evening to southbound operation uh, for the weekend. Uh, if you can, just like everyone else has said, uh, please stay home if you can. Enjoy the weather. Enjoy the time with your family. Uh, thank you for doing that. Uh, the uh, traffic volumes today have been light, and it's because of your uh, 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 cooperation and uh, your flexibility in staying home. If you do need to go out, uh, please check our webpage especially if you're going a longer distance, uh, even if it may not be 
snowing here. Uh, we've got a major winter event going on all the way across the state. So uh, if your trip especially extends beyond Seattle, uh, check our webpage, check conditions, uh, check out your vehicle uh, before you travel, and uh, make sure you take it slow when you go. Um, please uh, also respect uh, and give distance to our emergency vehicles and uh, 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 hope you have a, a fantastic weekend. Thank you. And finally, we will be hearing from uh, Director Helen Howell, Seattle HSD. Good afternoon. The city is operating three severe weather shelters through Monday morning, February 15th. Uh, the shelters can accommodate 164 guests. Last night, 90 of the 164 beds were occupied. On Tuesday, the city opened Fisher Pavilion at the Seattle Center with a capacity of 78. And yesterday, HSD, in partnership with the Parks Department, opened Garfield Community Center, which has a capacity for 41 people, and Bitter Lake Community Center, which has a capacity for 45 people. All of these shelters are 24 hours, and overnight guests may remain in the shelters during the day. Operation Sack Lunch is providing three meals a day at these locations, and pets and service animals are allowed at the community center locations. Uh, last night at Fisher Pavilion, we had 74 people who utilized the shelter, and eight individuals stayed at the Garfield Community Center and another eight at uh, Bitter Lake Community Center. All the shelters are operating in accordance with public health COVID-19 protocols, including physical distancing, masks, and screening for symptoms. Uh, shower trailers are located at Fisher Pavilion and daily cleaning of shelters also provided. A new permanent shelter is also opening at First Presbyterian Church on First Hill at 8 p.m. this evening. It's a women's only shelter operated by wheel. It can accommodate up to 60 clients. Initially, it will operate as an overnight only shelter from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., but will eventually become a 24 seven enhanced shelter. The space includes showers, a dining area, nurses station, case manager's office and storage. I wanna thank the providers helping set up our severe weather emergency response, the Salvation Army, Lehigh and Compass Housing. But also I wanna thank all our provider partners throughout this shelter system who provide essential services each night to over 2000 of our neighbors experiencing homelessness. The HOPE team uh, staff in coordination with Seattle Parks Department and Health One are providing evening welfare visits to people living unsheltered in encampments. Uh, Seattle Parks is lending passenger vans to the HOPE team to help with transportation. However, transportation will be limited due to COVID-19 protocols. Since Wednesday, the HOPE team has had 151 conversations with individuals about the temporary shelters, provided 124 individuals with winter supplies, such as hats, gloves, hand warmers, and provided basic needs supplies, water, snacks to 84 individuals. The areas visited include Soto, Georgetown, Ballard, Lake City, Downtown, Capitol Hill, and the University District. Food banks, no known impacts to food bank or meal programs at this time. Uh, and in terms of our aging and disability services, there have been no impacts to our case management program. Finally, ADS does coordinate with public health on their COVID-19 vaccine, uh, COVID vaccine efforts. And the latest information we have is that the Auburn Drive-In COVID Vaccine Clinic has suspended operations However, testing is still available on site. Public health is directing people with Auburn drive-in appointments to the Kent location. Please contact Seattle King County Public Health for more information. Thank you. Thank you, Director Howell, and thank you to all of our speakers today. Um, as we move into our Q&A session here today, I want to make two quick notes at the top. One, uh, once again, a reminder, if you have a question you have not RSVP'd, please make a note in the chat and I will do my best to call on you. Second, please, for the um, respect and, and 
thank to thank everyone who has joined us here from a transportation agency to respond to the weather. Please keep questions weather and weather response related today. Um, we'd be happy to follow up with you after the press conference if you have questions about anything else happening right now. Um, and with that, our first question will come from Tracy Record, West Seattle Blog. Tracy, the floor is yours. Thank you. A uh, question for Sam. Um, is there any chance that if this does turn into a, a big snowstorm as expected, that the low bridge restrictions will be lifted so that if people really have to go out and use a bridge, they don't have to drive an extra several miles to get to one of the detour routes? Thanks for that question, Tracy. Um, we, ha we have photo enforcement uh, restricting uh, access on the low bridge to transit and emergency vehicles and freight. Those remain our priorities during the snow event as well. Uh, so there won't be any change to, uh, to photo enforcement policies during the period uh, of snow. The, the other routes feeding to the First Avenue South Bridge and the uh, South Park Bridge are part of our snow network. Uh, we're working hard to keep those clear as well. Um, and so they, they shouldn't be a problem uh, for people to access those if they need to. But again, we want people to take care and to only leave if they absolutely have to. Thank you, Sam. Our next question will come from Essex Porter, Cairo 7. Essex, the floor is yours. Uh, yes, uh, could I get, uh, this is Zimbabwe, to uh, expand on the city at large, just how much in terms of resources are you throwing at the storm? And uh, also a question, uh, and I'm not sure who might be there to answer a question about keeping the power on. What about the resources uh, being uh, deployed to be sure that electrical power stays on since it's so cold? Sure, I'll take the first part. Um, the, you know, we've got a full deployment of our equipment uh, ready to go. Uh, we've been on, on 12 hour shifts for our workforce since uh, yesterday morning and have been working overnight uh, and, and during the day before that to start pretreatment. Um, we also have tremendous partnership within the city to make sure that our equipment stays up and running. The vehicle shop uh, run by the city uh, is tireless and in, in, if any, any pieces of equipment go down of, of working to get them back up. Uh, so we are, we are as prepared as we can be for this uh, and we'll have all equipment ready to go. And hi, this is Deborah Smith and I'm the CEO general manager of Seattle City Light. And uh, I can say the same for us. We have crews on standby ready to roll. Uh, we'll assess as the day wears on to determine whether we just keep folks on or whether we call back, but we've gone to incident command structure. We're having regular tactics calls and we're ready. Thank you very much. And thank you for being here, Deborah Smith. Thanks for making an appearance. Um, our next question will come from Erica Barnett, Publicola. Erica, the floor is yours. Thanks. Um, quick, yes, no question. Um, and then um, a follow up. Um, are any of the new shelter options open to families with children or is it just um, single individuals? And um, why are the numbers at Garfield and Bitter Lake so low? Um, can you talk a little bit, maybe this is a question for Director Howell about uh, what kind of outreach is being done to let people experiencing homelessness know that these options are available? Uh, Hello, uh, none of the um, shelter options that I mentioned are uh, take families. However, the King County Family Shelter Intake Line is available and making space for, fam for families 24 seven. The intake line can be reached by calling area code 206-245-1026. Again, that's 206-245-1026. Um, I'm sorry, there was a follow up. Another question. Families. Oh, and the low numbers at, at, at Bitter Lake and Garfield. I know the HOPE team is doing the outreach that I listed and covering a fair amount of uh, ground. Soto, Georgetown, Ballard, Lake City, downtown, Capitol Hill and the University District. So um, we're doing what we can and uh, hoping that people take full advantage of the shelter we do have available. Thank you very much for that question and thank you, uh, Director Howell. Um, not seeing any additional questions being put into the chat here, I will wait um, for 
a few seconds to see if anyone would like to jump in at the last minute before we call this press conference a little bit early. Um, here we go. Um, Jack Russillo. Jack, I will I will open your your line here as soon as I find you. There you go. Oh, Jack. hello. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm a reporter from the South Seattle Emerald, and I am just curious for in terms of street plowing, uh, will there be a map or some sort of guide for which streets will be plowed? Um, will that be published anywhere, anything like that, or is that kind of on the go? That is... Uh published now on our snow preparedness website, our winter weather website. Uh, and there is a, um, a GIS map that people can see uh, progress and, and relative conditions um, that's that's uh, updated in, in quasi real time. Thank you, Director Zimbabwe. I'll also say, while I've got the floor for just for a second, um, we are uh, uh, and, and it's a, maybe of interest to the South, South Seattle Emerald. Um, we are delaying the start of the Lake Washington Boulevard closures uh, anticipated to, to be um, starting on Monday um, for to enable snow clearance uh, there as well. Um, so I know that was previously announced as being something that would start tomorrow. That will start, uh, the plan is for that to start on Monday. Great, thank you. Not seeing any more questions, I would like to, um, Mayor, would you like to say some closing words before we adjourn? Yeah, <clears throat> yes, thank you, Anthony. First, I wanna thank all the department directors here and our fellow, but also their teams who have already been working around the clock. And we know from our previous snow events that it is a long, grueling days. Um, and so I wanna thank them for all the work they're doing and I know they will be doing. I want to thank everybody for heeding the advice. Please stay home if you can stay home. Don't be driving because the roads will be treacherous. Um, the plowed roads will are you still have to get access to those. And again, we won't be able to get to every neighborhood. So getting to the plowed roads can sometimes be the challenge. You know, if the weather forecast is accurate, you know, we're looking at a tsunami like we haven't had for a while, where we have a great accumulation in a very short period of time. If you see neighbors experiencing homelessness that need help, please make sure that they have access to and know how to get help. There's contact on our website, but you can also contact the Human Services Division, Parks Department and the likes to get them to one of the shelters that is open. I wanna thank everybody for all the efforts they've been making on COVID-19. We have those numbers going in the right direction, but as Peter said, um, there's nothing about snow that changes the, the reality of this virus. So do please continue to wear your mask, keep your physical distance, and everybody try to stay safe and stay warm. If you do enjoy the snow, if you're one of those people, enjoy it, get outside, and hopefully um, it won't stay around too long, but temperatures show that it will stay around for a while. So everyone take care and have a safe weekend. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to all of our speakers today. That now concludes today's press conference.